When does it make sense to join a boat club versus owning a boat yourself? I'm here with the Freedom Boat Club Sydney North. They're part of the biggest boat club in the world and they're now in Australia. We're here at the Bob and Head location. Um, and behind me, we've got the Sea Ray 230 SPX. We've also got a Zodiac. In this club, you can drive any of their boats. So in this video, we're actually gonna do a tour of the Sea Ray, and then we're gonna go for a quick drive. And at the end of the video, I'll talk about the style of person who would be best suited to this sort of ownership. So guys, I'm gonna leave some links in the description below for pricing and to Freedom Boat Club North. But let's just check out the bow of this Sea Ray first. Um, so if you don't know Sea Ray, they're just massive. They absolutely dominate the market for boats under 40 feet. And they have for as long as I've been alive, basically. I've, I sold boats for 20 years before getting into this industry and Sea Ray dominated in our market and they continue to, and for good reason. They build a high quality product um, that doesn't let you down, put it that way. Um, they use high quality fixtures and fittings and it's just a good piece of kit that does what it says it's gonna do. And what does this boat say it's gonna do? It basically says it's gonna take you and eight people, you know, eight people in total, for example, out for a really fantastic day in protected waters. It's not gonna to burn too much fuel. You're gonna have a wonderful place to hang out on board. We have a toilet, which I'm gonna show you, um, or you can go to fun places, go to beaches and that sort of stuff and, and get around and get on and off with ease, towing biscuits and water toys as you see fit. So, multifunctional. I'm gonna open this up so you can get on board in a second, Nikki. Um, so, I've got storage underneath me all the way around uh, these seats. Forward is where you would store the anchor. It's just a manual deployment on a boat like this. Keep it simple is the word. Um, we have an opening windscreen here and these two uh, uh, you know, bases, bed bases, come out to make a center walk through. Underneath that is some storage. They haven't wasted any space on this boat so you can get access to absolutely everything just pass me the camera nikki you jump on and then we'll take you guys along with us and i just love this outboard generation of boats because you'll see in a second uh, the space where we used to have the inboard stern drive uh, which used to be all the rage for this style of boat is now a wonderful massive storage space and it is quite intelligent use of space so first things first um, huge amount of space just capture all this nikki just imagine yourself with your whole family. This is a boat where mum, dad, the kids and their mates can come and have a, a good day on the water because of this space we have here. All wrap around, everyone can face each other um, and enjoy themselves for the day. So basically come in, let's just cover this section. We'll actually go to the back of the boat and then we'll make our way further forward. It seems logical when we're trying to film it. I'll show you guys the transom. So see how this sun lounge takes up the whole back of the boat at the moment? Well, there's a trick to it. We can actually just, I, should, I did work this out before. Here it is, right there. There's a little latch just here, which allows me to open this up and then up we go. Um, here is a little kitten doggy door just like so, and now I can get to the transom. And with that secured, I also have storage underneath here, forward, and my house and engine battery. So we have two batteries on this boat. You're not gonna run out of power because you can isolate that engine battery from your house battery and still run the stereo. So by doing that, we've opened up the back of the boat if you wanna come out here and jump in the water. The swim ladder, is a four-step telescopic swim ladder accessible on port. And I just want to point out, it has a decent little stopper just here. So that's going to stop it from uh, just deploying when you don't want it to, put, to deploy, like some of them do. Now, the engine will trim up and out of the water. We've got the ski pole mounted in the middle here. And now, let me show you guys. So you go forward a bit, Nikki. And let me show you guys this storage locker. I might as well just do it now because it's pretty, pretty handy. And I imagine this being a real useful one for many of you when you're getting on with everyone's bags. So basically see this here and see this here. What you do, you unlock by doing that. Hopefully you heard that. And then just come, come and have a look at this. It's huge. It's really, really deep. 
you could hide naughty children in there and they would fit. <laughs> Yeah, I know, isn't it? So we've got all around white light in there as well. It is drained. We've got some technical access as well. But you could just load heaps and heaps of bags in there without an issue. But then there's more storage underneath all of these seats on every side. We can get into them. So safety gear, more bags, water toys, wakeboards, all that sort of stuff can have a place on this boat. Got drink holders here and here. We're underneath the shade you would just leave this shade up because of the way it's been designed so you're always going to have some protection from the sun it doesn't flap around it's good at speeds and we've got the uh, powder coated black aluminium targa arch um, wakeboard storage would actually be under here because it's more logical to put items of length in this locker just here so because that goes forward we have more length another foot and a half forward just there and that seems like the sensible place for that so what we'll do we'll close that up there and <laughs> i love your socks nikki so come back here and then let's look forward and i'll show everyone the helm so quite an upgrade of sea rays a few years ago look at the the styling on the steering wheel just here we've got a flat dash with the Simrad display in the middle. Fusion, we've just got a couple of our uh, switches for operation on port and starboard. Key start or key power on and push button start in this 200 horsepower Mercury that we've got on this one. Um, fire extinguisher just down there. We've got some USB charging, drink holder just there. Flip up bolster on either side. They're quite, quite tough. So you do actually almost need two hands to do these ones. It's not one that you could just flip up with one hand uh, when it's brand new anyway but these seats will swivel around and face aft so we can turn it into the full social mode and they do go forward and back so they're ideal for people with longer legs as well just pay attention to some of the the soft finishings down the sides here i've always done a good job of this sort of stuff so you're not going to um you're never really going to hurt yourself because you've got something soft to lean against or fall on but i want to point out ladies we have a loo so it's a you know what is a moderately sized day boat you can be a winter's day and not having to go for a swim and still enjoy your time on the water that is so crucial good place to store fenders as well and other bits and pieces but adding that to the mix just changed your day because if you're having a nice picnic somewhere lovely and uh you know it's not practical to go to the toilet or up anchor and go find a toilet like you'd have to do on other boats that's gonna change it for you. Come on, let's go for a drive. All right, first things first, safety lanyard on, on a boat like this. We just wanna make sure we don't do anything silly. Um, get comfortable at the helm. These sea rays are just so good at ergonomics. Uh, the Americans know a thing or two about this, and I gotta say, sea ray uh, have always got it right. Um, you can slide the seat forward and back as you see fit, um, and just pay attention to flipping up the bolster and see what is comfortable from a standing sitting on the bolster to then sitting down uh, point of view so if you need to move the bolster like that you can do it um, my sight lines are awesome let's just get the boat up and moving and i'm 5'7 so i'm sitting down with the seat in this position looking straight through the glass um, i have to thank uh, viewer and commenter big mike in the comments to please allow for people who are six foot seven. This happens to be one foot long and there you go. So that's what short Dan sees and this is what Big Mike sees. So uh, hopefully that's of some use to you, Big Mike. You gave me that idea, so I'll try and use that from now on. Um, but this is a inshore boat a uh, fair weather boat and it's all about fun and that's what you should be doing on something like this so let's just talk about the speeds that we're going to get all righty plenty of power straight up to 24 knots there at uh, revs of 2700 revs i've got the 
auto, it's called the active trim, uh, activated on this one right now. And that just gives me now a speed of steady 26 knots at a fuel flow of 32 litres an hour. That's the great thing about outboard day boats like this. So let's just put the boat through a slow, steady turn. We're in beautiful national park, protected waters here. So you really don't have any dangers to worry about in terms of sea states and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm running the 200 horsepower Mercury and let's just give it some speed. Oh, it's just got a bit of pickup. So, 31 knots, 66 litres consumption. I'll give the engine a little trim up. 33, 34 knots. Okay, what is that telling me? I've got a total of 67 litres consumption, a top speed of 35 knots. That means if I load this boat up with seven guests, eight people in total, I'm still going to get a solid 30 knots top speed out of it is my prediction and a sensible cruising speed back somewhere in a let's feel this out i'm gonna say 27 to 28 knots at a fuel consumption of 35 liters so put that into perspective going from bob and head up to cottage point for lunch or heading all the way down the pit water really you are going to be using 30 to 40 litres of fuel maximum for your whole day on a boat like this. Let's just give it some more speed. Comfortable. Okay, I'm now going to flip up and sit on the bolster. So the wind is definitely in my hair there. So on a hot summer's day, this is going to be really pleasurable. Right now, middle of winter, it's a bit nippy. So you're only going to do this for a limited amount of time. So I'm going to flip back down again. I've got to say, from a seated position, you can tell this boat is just designed for the operator to say, stay comfortable and seated. You're probably only gonna be elevating yourself to a standing or sitting up on the bolster when you're in going through boat wash or trying to park the boat at a marina or anchor or do some close quarters maneuvering and you just need to increase that visibility. That's quite fun there. Through the turn, good, sensible family boating stuff this. Okay, so now let's put the boat through a couple of S turns. So a style of boat like this is designed to give you lots and lots of space on deck, hence why you wouldn't take it in the ocean. It's just not that sort of the sort of boat. It's not designed for that because it would bounce around too much. You'd get water over the bow, that sort of thing. So where we are right now is absolutely perfect. That's predictable, by the way. I'm just doing those turns at 30 knots. And at 30 knots, my fuel flow with the 200 horsepower is 41 litres. So you go from what I believe is a sensible cruise speed, which is just at the 2,700 odd revs, giving me about 27 knots and 35 litres, to say a fast cruise of about 3,000 revs, giving me 30 knots and 40 litres. Once I Step it up over that 3,000. Now I'm getting to the 3,250, 35. Look at the fuel flow, doubles, it doubles. So that's really where the boat is happy. Fantastic. Let's head back to the marina. So I hope that was useful guys. Um, boat club, who suits boat club membership? Uh, in my opinion, it's always been the busy people, the time poor people because a boat club membership, they handle everything. You literally just step on, go boating, drop the boat back at the fuel wharf, and you don't have to worry about it. So if that's something that's gonna be an advantage to you, to how you operate your days, then a boat club really will suit you. There's disadvantages as well. If you wanna go overnight boating, well, you're not gonna do that with a boat club. If you wanna go out to the ocean, you're not gonna do that either. Or if you wanna hook up against on your trailer behind your four-wheel drive and head off on some random adventure that's not going to suit your boat club style of membership unless to be fair you go with a big club boat club because freedom have locations all around the world so that's just something to consider um, but yeah if you're the sort of person who just wants to park your car get out unload your gear grab your food from the cafe like you can just here at bob and head and go and enjoy nature it's going to be perfectly suitable for you. So that's the sort of demographic that I see this boat 
and this club being ideal for. So if that's you, just follow the links in the description below. I've left details to the guys who can help you. You've been watching Dan's Boat Life. My name's Dan Jones. Thanks very much. I'll see you on the next one.